200 milliseconds. That's one fifth of a second. That's how long it takes us to size someone up and decide whether they're trustworthy. 200 milliseconds. To give you some context, it takes you 300 milliseconds to blink. So literally, in less than a blink of an eye, your brain has already processed all the information it needs to judge someone's trustworthiness. Why do you think we humans developed the ability to do this so quickly? Well, the short answer is that knowing who to trust kept our ancestors alive. But beyond survival, it also served another very important function. As a species, we're not that fast. We're not very strong, we can't fly, and we don't have great vision or hearing. But what we do have is intelligence. And we learned long ago that if we cooperate, if we work together, that we can not only survive, but thrive. Cooperation became an evolutionary advantage for us, and cooperation requires trust. We humans are social animals, and trust is the foundation of human relationships. We've built our social structures, our economy, our entire society to operate on trusting relationships with others. But I think each of us understands intuitively that we don't trust as much as we used to. That trust has declined. And you're right, it has. But I don't think most people fully realize just how bad it's gotten. If you look at the data that measures trust, I think you'll find it as alarming as I did. A generation ago, 78% of us said that we trusted the federal government. Today, that number is 18%. 72% of us said that we trusted the media. Today, less than a third of us do. Fewer than 20% of us say that we trust businesses to do the right thing. And the credibility of CEOs has hit an all-time low. As recently as 30 years ago, fully half of us agreed that most people could be trusted. Today, less than a third of us feel the same way. And if you ask millennials, that number drops to 19%. And this is not just an American issue. This is a global phenomenon. The folks at Edelman Research each year publish their trust barometer, where they interview more than 33,000 people across 28 different countries, tracking trust in that country's major institutions. Global average for trust has fallen below 50% meaning that according to Edelman's classifications, we live in a distrusting world. Wow, that's depressing, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's not even lunchtime yet. <laughs> what these numbers show is that this decline in trust is bigger than any political administration or economic environment. Trust has been declining for more than 50 years. No, it's bigger than that. This change is taking place on a societal level. And it begs the question, when do these numbers fall to the point where it changes how trust in our society works? Or doesn't work? At what point do we cross a line? Well, looking at those numbers, it's not hard to imagine that that line may very well already be behind us. What is hard to imagine is that we're ever going back to the way that it used to be. This is our new reality. This is the new world that we live in. To become trusted in this new world, we need to change the way that we think about trust. We need to reevaluate our understanding of what trust is and how trust now works. The first thing that we need to change is this belief that you have trust until you lose trust. In other words, that you will be trusted 
unless you prove unworthy of that trust. In a world where people's willingness to trust was high, the default position was that you would be trusted. You didn't need to build trust. You just needed to preserve it because you began each relationship from a position of mutual trust. But that's not the case anymore. The default position is no longer that people will trust you. I think the data shows that you can no longer assume that. This idea that we're no longer getting the benefit of the doubt. It's a little disconcerting, isn't it? Feels a little like we're now guilty until proven innocent, right? But that's because we have a tendency to think of trust as an either or proposition, that you're either trusted or you're distrusted. But that's not the case because trust and distrust are not opposites. In fact, the pathways in our brain that we use for trust are different from the ones that we use for distrust. We actually process them in different parts of our brain. One is not merely the absence of the other. There's a third option, a space between trusted and distrusted. I call this space the trust trough. <laughs> this is where doubt lives. And it lives along a continuum from uncertainty to skepticism to outright suspicion. The important thing to understand about the trust trough is that it is a place of inaction. See, to trust is to act in a positive direction. If I trust you, I'm willing to act toward you positively, to embrace your ideas, to support your causes, to buy your products. If I distrust you, I'm also willing to act toward you, but in a negative way. I will withhold my support. I may warn others about you. I may actively advocate against you. But in the trust trough, there is no action. If people don't trust, they don't act. Let me say that again. If people don't trust, they don't act. It was the Nobel laureate and author, Elie Wiesel, who said, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. Because to hate, you still need to care. Well, similarly, the opposite of trust is not distrust, it's apathy, it's an unwillingness to act. The new default position for trust is now somewhere in the trust trough. You're not distrusted, but you're not necessarily trusted either. If you want to become trusted, if you want to get people to act, if you want to get them out of the trust trough, you now need to first prove to them that you are worthy of their trust. It's no longer about preserving trust. Nowadays, you need to actively build trust. So how do you do that? Well, to understand how to build trust, you first need to understand what trust is. See, we have a tendency to think of trust as a single thing. It's not. It's actually a pretty complex combination of judgments and assessments that we make about someone. But trust has two main components, two sides of a coin, if you will. When we use the word trust, we're usually using it in the context of evaluating either someone's competence or their sincerity. By competence, we mean, are you capable? Do I believe that you can do what you claim? And are you dependable? Do you have a history of fulfilling commitments? Sincerity means, are you honest? Do I believe that you will be truthful with me? And are you fair? Do I believe that you will act in good faith and consider my needs in addition to your own? Another way to think about this is that competence judges someone's actions, 
while sincerity judges their intentions. So let me ask you this. Which side is more important? I'll ask it in a slightly different way. Who would you rather deal with? Someone who is honest but incompetent? <laughs> or someone who is competent but dishonest? Here's something else to consider. I think it's safe to say that as a society that we've become more competent over time. Would you agree? That cell phone in your pocket is a heck of a lot more capable and dependable than the one you had even five years ago. But if it's true that we've become more competent over time, and if competence were more important, then shouldn't trust be increasing? Shouldn't the lines on all those charts be going upwards? But they're not. And this leads me to the conclusion that what's responsible for the dramatic decline in people's willingness to trust has more to do with a lapse of sincerity than a lapse of competence. Make no mistake, both are important. But you build stronger levels of trust through sincerity than you do through competence. And people are far more willing to forgive a lapse of competence than they are a lapse of sincerity. If you want to become trusted in this new world, you need to prove that you are both competent in your actions, but also, more importantly, that you are sincere, that you are honest and fair in your intentions. Becoming trusted is harder than it's ever been. But in a world where people's willingness to trust continues to decline, it's also never been more important than it is right now. You can have the best products, the best service, the best prices, but none of that matters if people don't trust you. 200 milliseconds. That's how important trust is. Thank you very much.